Rectech, built by grillers, for grillers, stainless steel. Buy that grill, you'll never buy another one. Smart Grill Technology, R-E-C-T-E-Q.com, Rectech with a Q.com. I actually thought the Giants, many will say, blew an 11-point lead last night late. My takeaway is that was a pretty good loss. I'll give you four or five reasons. I thought Daniel Jones, I know he tripped and fell, but I thought he played pretty good. They have no running game, so it's kind of relying on him to make plays. He did. I think the team totally buys into Joe Judge. How do I know that? Unlike the Cowboys, they think they get a little bit better every week. They should have won that game last night. They have no running game. They were built around Saquon Barkley. He's out. They had no training camp. So really, September was their training camp. And I look at them and I think they remind me of the Miami Dolphins last year. They're not a great football team, but they're getting better every week. So they clearly buy into the coach. When you're the Cowboys and you don't buy into the coach, you get worse every week. That's what's happening there. Um, the real question is, with this team, after watching him now for a month and a half, is, is Daniel Jones the guy? And after watching him last night in the loss, my takeaway is, whether he is or not, and I would lean yes, they're too competent not to win two or three more games. They play Dallas again at home. They play the Bengals. They play Washington. They play Philadelphia at home. They're going to win a couple of those games. They've already got one win. Should have two. They outplayed the Rams for most of that three and a half hours. They're a one-win team that's going to finish as a three-win team, maybe more. They're just simply too competent to be in the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes. So that's my takeaway from last night. You may not like to hear that, but we've got teams right now. The Jets are not going to win more than a game if that. Darnold's back. He maybe wins one or two. The Giants are a better football team getting better. The Jets are worse, not good anywhere, and, and playing poor football. The Jags, Washington, and Atlanta. Atlanta just fired everybody. Those teams are really eyeing Trevor Lawrence. It's not like the Giants have a history of bailing on quarterbacks. Eli Manning for years and years threw lots of interceptions. Daniel Jones has lots of fumbles. But he played in a major conference. He's had good quarterback coaches in college and the pros. He's got Jason Garrett, who played the game. He had David Cutcliffe. He appears to be getting better. I thought he was very competent last night to above average. Joe Judge afterwards, I think the Giants are actually, for a losing team, in pretty good shape going forward. You know, we're putting together a foundation for a team that we hope that lasts, and we play the right type of football for a long time. So we've got a culture being built right now that's moving in the right direction. We've got a lot of good football being played. Obviously, we've got to clean up a lot of things. We've eliminated some mistakes and maximize our opportunities, like I said earlier. But in terms of to the fans, I'm not going to ask to be patient. That's not your job to be patient. Your job is to go ahead and be entertained by us and what we put on the field. They've lost three games by 12 points. Going forward, they've got three or four games that are absolute losses, three or four go-either-way games, and three or four games, Dallas at home, Philadelphia at home, Washington and the Bengals. I think they can win all four of those. They're competent and getting better. Dallas right now is not competent and getting worse. They'll beat Dallas next time they play them. So I think they're officially out of the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes. You won't have to make that decision. That's now on the Jets. Real tough decision. Jags, easy decision if you get him. In Atlanta, go either way decision. Do you keep Matt Ryan or not? Here's Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. They also had a ton of penalties at the end of the game. Like, it, yeah. it, it unraveled for the Giants Oh, there. It, it, listen, this is what happens to young teams that lose their star player with no training camp and a new head coach. It is, they're going to have these unravel moments. I, I, I feel a lot like the Giants that I did with the Dolphins last year or I do with the Bengals this year. Like, you can lose and be like, no, they're going in the right direction. Yeah. You, don't have to go, you don't have to win games to impress me. The Dolphins this year... You know, they took last year's momentum. Dolphins were five and four, last nine games. You watch them this year, and you're like, oh, this is a potential playoff team. Today, they'd be a playoff team. We're not incredibly patient anymore. No. And obviously, the Giants should have won that game last night, but yeah. that's what happens when you're not completely put together. To all of your, your points there, I think also the penalties just killed them. Yep. A couple of those penalties, Evan Ingram catches that ball, and it's that's, a different and, conversation this morning. By the way, Daniel Jones threw the game-winning touchdown. His guy didn't catch it. So, again, Daniel Jones was more than competent last yeah. night. So the Patriots fell to 2-3 and three after a poor performance from Cam Newton against the Broncos last week. He was barely able to practice in the two weeks leading up to the game, but he's not making any excuses and is taking blame for the team's recent struggles. Just haven't been good. 
and I haven't I haven't matched enough good plays together for for my liking and that's what it comes down to and I know what I'm capable of and my standard is extremely high and I haven't been meeting it my personal standard so that's that's how I feel this feels like a big game for the Patriots. Oh, it feels weekend. like. I think it feels huge for Cam. Because Cam's great game when we all bought in with Seattle. But now you look at Seattle and it's like, okay, Ryan Fitzpatrick threw for 300 yards against Seattle. Matt Ryan threw for 450 yards. Kirk Cousins had a 93 passer. Dak threw for 427 yards. Everybody's kind of been good against Seattle. So now it's like, okay, I need a second game. And San Francisco, I know they lost Bosa. And I know their defensive front's not as good, but Joy, I just looked this morning, they're still a top five defense. Like, let's not pretend San Francisco doesn't have most of their Super Bowl roster from last year. Yeah. When, when Garoppolo's healthy, I think they're going to beat New England this weekend. I think San Francisco's a real team. Well, they just beat the Rams 24-16, which obviously yeah, that's what they do, <laughs> right. beat the Rams. But this does, this feels like a really big game for the Patriots for, for the season. Now, obviously... It's the 49ers, and, you know, they could still obviously win the division depending on how things go with the Bills. But after losing Cam for those for that week and then the performance with the Broncos, it just feels like they need this game to get back on the momentum that they were on at the beginning of the season. Obviously, they already have a losing record. I'm with you. I think the 49ers win this game, but it is at the Patriots, so there's some travel involved. I, I just think this is a, this is a must-win situation yeah. for, for the Patriots. So Antonio Brown's eight-game suspension is coming to an end soon. And if he gets another chance in the NFL, Russell Wilson thinks Seattle would be a great fit. From the conversations I've had with him, he's really been remorseful and just he's been humbled, you know, along the way. I think that, um, you know, with our culture, I can speak those on us, you know, and, and how our culture is. I think, you know, with Coach Carroll, I think with the teammates that we have, uh, the men that we have and the, and the growth, I think it's, if he does play football, I think this is a, a great place for, if he does play again, you know. Um, you know, I think this is a place that he'll grow a lot as a man too as well. I do think that Seattle has a good culture, which I think would be necessary to bring in someone like Antonio Brown. Yeah, I mean, it's a good locker room. Yes, I just don't, I don't trust it at this point. Like, is he gonna end up somewhere? Yes, he is, because he's that kind of talent and. This is a competitive industry. Here, here's what worries me. So Pittsburgh's a really well-run operation. Right. It unraveled. Then he eventually went to New England. Really good operation. It unraveled. So it's not like he's been like with the Lions. Now, it did unravel with the Raiders, and I can be more cynical of that. Yeah, but I also felt like the Raiders did everything they could to support him. It oh, wasn't like it was a situation where I was really picking sides there. Like, he was traded, and then, you remember, he had the blisters on his feet because of the chirotherapy and couldn't practice, and then there was the helmet situation, and then there was the altercation with Mike Mayock, and then the recording of the private conversation with John Gruden, and then he demanded his release after the team voided his guaranteed money. So there was just, like, thing after thing after thing. I'm with you. The Raiders is kind of an isolated situation where things could be considered dysfunctional, but there's no excuse for the Steelers, and there's no excuse for the Patriots. Like, those are two of the best run organizations in the league. And even though I do think Seattle is very well run, it's like, what is the cost benefit of this situation? If you if he comes in and he does what he's supposed to do and does his job and doesn't cause any drama, then that's that's a great situation, right? But we've seen that that's, that's not what tends to happen. Now, I understand Russell Wilson has spoken with him and he's said he's humbled and I, I just, I need to see it. But if I was a general manager, it's not worth it to me. One of the things with Antonio Brown that did him no good was his social media accounts. I almost think if I signed him, I'd say, okay, you're off those. It, oh, oh, yeah. No, off. whoever signs him, if I was to sign him, it's a zero tolerance policy for everything. Like, there's no social media during the season. None. I don't want to hear about, like, advertisements and all that. Like, you cannot use your social media during the season at all like one yeah. tweet and you're cut like that's it <laughs> no. i'm not dealing with any kind of drama whatsoever if you're going to come in because why why you, i'm the one taking all the risk in this that's situation right. so yeah that's that to me like is non-negotiable levy and bell is trying to make a good impression on his new chiefs teammates and he started with his fellow running back clyde edwards hilaire oh. offensive coordinator eric bien revealed that levy made an effort to connect with edwards hilaire before he even signed with the team levy reached out to, to clyde and had a, a conversation with him and asked him, you know, and told him, basically, I don't want to step on your toes, you know, which 
I want to know if you're okay with me coming in here. And he's a classy individual. It says a lot about the person who does not want to come up and disrupt the chemistry that we have. I think it does say a lot about Le'Veon. I've never, I've never, I didn't like when he went on Facebook in a locker room. Though that was I, Antonio Brown. Was that Antonio Brown? Yeah. Okay. I didn't love the way, I thought he made a poor decision leaving Pittsburgh. But if you go back and look at every single comment and tweet Lavian Bell did with the Jets, he always said, it's a businessman, I'm here to help. He, this, some guys are, most guys that are trouble are fairly called trouble. They're labeled trouble. Lavian Bell to me has always been almost aloof where it's like, it's a business. He doesn't love football perhaps as much as we want our players to love it, but he's never been disruptive to me. No. Adam Gase, another star he just didn't like. I, I, I think he's going to have a lot of success with Kansas City, which is going to be another bad mark on Adam Gase. But uh, the Steelers situation, I can't really fault him, even though I think that that was the best place for him. I can't fault anybody who wants to bet on themselves and wants to maximize their money. And if that's how you want to handle it, like it's your career, no one's going to tell us how to run our careers. Do what you want. I just think that the Steelers was the best situation for him. But similarly, I think Kansas City is a great situation for him at this point in his career. And him coming into what's obviously a good culture, he knows this movement going in. Like, he had options, obviously, and wanted to come into a situation where he feels comfortable, he's not disrupting anything, and he has self-awareness, which is which is what I appreciate the most about Le'Veon Bell. He didn't have to do this. He didn't have to call yeah. Clive Edward Teller and ask him, you know, what the situation is, and he doesn't want to disrupt anything. So I, I'm really interested to see how this, this works with Le'Veon and the Chiefs. Good stuff, Joy. Taylor with the news. Well, that's the news.